So it's about time we talk about the latest Intel CPU, the Core Ultra 9 285K. That's the new naming scheme, slightly new branding. They're calling it the foundation of the AI PC. It's got a new architecture. And we also have here built for real world performance. We've got eight performance cores, we've got 16 e efficiency cores and a 5.7 gigahertz max turbo, not bad. The architecture in now includes the integrated neural processing unit, which is something that Apple have had for, I don't know, about four or five years now. We also have the XELPG graphics architecture, new and upgraded. We've got increased CPU PCIe 5.0 lanes. We go down a little bit further, DDR5 6400. They have a little bit more to say about the memory speed there. I think that's important. Now, what I want to draw attention to is this new architecture, the, the foundation of the AI PC. Uh, we've got the GPU for high throughput, low power NPU. That's the neural processing unit and of course the CPU. So this is something we spoke about briefly before is the new approach that Intel is trying to take. I want to talk a little bit about the situation that we've got with AMD. So this is the most advanced AMD chip that we've got at the moment and that is the 9950X, right? Let's take a look at the memory, max memory speed, DDR5-5600. One thing that I noticed over the summer, because a lot of the reviewers were talking about this, is that AMD asks reviewers to review not at the factory spec, DDR5-5600. They ask them to review at, at 6000, which is, again, not the factory spec. And if you have a high performance system, you're using that for After Effects, you're using it maybe for working with the Flux models from Black Forest, you might be running at DDR5 3600. So that's gonna be quite a significant change in terms of performance. That's something to bear in mind as you see reviews and as you get commentary from some of the gaming reviewers. Now we already have one Oh, a couple. We've got a couple of samples for Passmark for the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K, 57582 for multi thread rating, and the single thread rating is 5146. This is easily the best performance. We'll take a look at this in a slightly different way later on. What I want to point out is that the samples is number two, just two samples. And if we go right down to the bottom, that there are just these two samples, and I believe that the results we're getting are just basically these two. It's this one here from the 14th, 68,000. That I believe is a record for a desktop CPU outside of the Threadripper. And then we have this excluded one, which is 46872, but it's excluded, but it seems to be included in the calculations. Let me just do the calculation. So yeah, this score 57582 is a combination of these two divided by two. But you can see one of these has been excluded and usually Passmark will exclude results with good reason. But for whatever reason, it's excluded, but it's being included inside of the score. So there's obviously some kind of calculation error. Let's take a look at the excluded one and see what's happening there. So if we take a look at this bad boy here, we can see that the score comes in pretty low at 46,000 and Part of the reason for this, I don't know, it could be the memory is not that fast. If we take a look at the memory, it is running at PC5 38400, not very fast. If we take a look at the one that is a lot faster, this one here is running at 6400 for the memory. This is PC5 44800. So this is basically running at the advertised speed for this particular chip. So this one seems to be maybe the one that we should go with rather than the one that is a little bit more limited. Now I've taken the multi-core performance for Passmark. This is Passmark scores and I've just presented them a little bit differently. We are going to look at this from the point of view of the 7950X3D from AMD. That is going to be 100. Anything above that is going to be more than 100. You can see here the 9950X gives us 106% above. It's a 6% improvement in performance over this bad boy here. And for multi-threaded performance, 
there are no Intel chips currently that actually outperform this. But if we exclude that one faulty score, the one that I think should have been excluded, we actually beat this score here. We get to 68,000. So that's higher than the 9950X. But if you want something more powerful than that, there is a whole bunch of Threadripper CPUs that you could purchase. But currently, if we go with that one correct score or that one non-excluded score, which should have been excluded, but which wasn't excluded, we would actually beat AMD for the new 285 chip. Quite interesting as well is that we beat everything for the single thread performance. So for single thread performance, these are the pass mark scores. We are gonna take the 9950X as 100. You can see the core Ultra 9 285K is about 8% faster. That's that one sample. And sometimes these one samples, the, the numbers can change quite a bit. But I think this is a pretty accurate number. I think that's a pretty accurate score because it's made up of those two measurements. So it's the top performing single thread performance. And in a lot of use cases, that single thread performance is the thing that really matters. As for pricing, we saw in the UK this 548 pound one at eBay. This one obviously is going to be coming out later on in the month. The motherboards are also on pre-order, but that's a very decent price. This is actually lower than some prices that I've seen for the 4900K, but significantly improved performance. Now we're over on the Geekbench browser benchmark charts, and you can see here we don't have here either the 9000 series CPUs or the Core Ultra CPUs. And that's the same for single and also multi-core. So what I did was that I grabbed about 50 of the 9950X scores and about 50 of the 285K scores. So they're already available, they're just not shown in the chart. We're gonna do some work and that's, we've already done some work to process the numbers. So these are the uh, Geekbench scores took about 50 of the Intel scores. There was a single and multi-threaded scores. And you gotta do this by hand because obviously the scores are not available in the chart. And we took the 9950X from AMD. Then a lot of processing to try to get some meaningful results, try to get some mean averages and median averages. Wasn't happy with the results and did a lot more work to try to get something meaningful. So I'm gonna give you the results that I thought were the most meaningful and I think we're probably gonna ignore everything else. So after a lot of processing, this is what we got. We took the six highest values out of 50 and then calculated the mean and median single core scores and the range and then the mean and the median for the multi core scores for Intel and for AMD. So here we've got the Intel Core Ultra 285. I'm gonna take, it's gonna take some time to get used to these. Intel Core Ultra 9285K. The summary here with a sample size of six, but chosen the highest performing out of 60, we got a single core mean, also median of 3410. Notice that for AMD, we've got 3584. That's significantly higher. And we also got a higher score for AMD when it came to the multi core score. So this is Geekbench and in both cases, AMD beats Intel. Now, prior to this analysis, I was getting AMD coming below Intel. It really did take quite a bit of time to do the, the maths and to figure out that some of the scores for, for AMD just weren't reliable. We had to get rid of them. So this turned out to be the best way of measuring the actual top performance. This is the kind of performance you get if you had a very well built system, excellent memory, got an excellent mother, motherboard you would get a slight advantage. If we take a look at this single core range, 3435 is the highest for Intel. And if we take a look at the lowest for AMD, it is higher than the highest. So the range for AMD all across that range, it is higher than the top score for Intel. We can actually take a look at the performance uh, in terms of percentages. So you can see Intel on the left, We've got AMD on the right. Where this is positive, it means AMD beat Intel by that amount. So for the single core, it's 5%. And uh, when we come down to the multi-core, it's 1.72. So that is very, very close. That would mean if you had a really high performance system with the Intel Core Ultra, 
and also a high performance system with the AMD uh, 9950X, you would actually get something that is kind of comparable in terms of overall performance. AMD just a little bit ahead. I do wonder if the kind of really bad data that we saw for the AMD chips will get included into, into the final score because there was a lot of low scores for AMD. So with AMD, we were getting these scores for the multi-core 5,000. Uh, we had 2,000. These were awful scores and these all had to be eliminated from the final result. So with careful uh, analysis and some statistical work, we actually get AMD beating Intel. Not sure that's what's going to be the result when the raw data is averaged out over at Geekbench, because I'm not sure they're going to do this. And we'll take a quick look at the motherboards that are available. We've got the X870E for the very high end for AMD, and we've got the Z890 for Intel. Now, if we take a look at the stuff that you get just on the very high end motherboards, this is the 699 Crosshair from ASUS. Um, very low rating, you can completely ignore that. That's for the X670E, which is from a couple of years ago. But here we've got DDR5, 192 gigs possible with the new chips from AMD. We've got a ton of PCIe lanes, PCIe 5 lanes. We've got two PCIe 5 at X16, which I think means you could have quite an interesting setup there on, on this $700 motherboard. USB 4, same speed as Thunderbolt 4. And you can see the other features there, Wi-Fi 7, about three times faster than Wi-Fi 6. Let's take a look at what's happening with the equivalent Intel. So we can see the exact equivalent of this motherboard for Intel. Here we are, and there it is. Just don't waste your time. We're just gonna look at the key components for that you only find on the very high-end motherboards. We've got the same amount of memory, 192. We've got here one PCIe 5 X16 slot, which is interesting. And we've got Thunderbolt 4. I think the Thunderbolt 4, although it's same speed as the USB 4, Thunderbolt 4 is a lot more useful. You can do a whole lot more with Thunderbolt 4 than you can with USB 4. So we've got quick charge. Everything is about the same. One area where there's a difference, we've got slightly better power stages, but for the most part, they're very similar. I think I have a slight preference maybe for, for the Intel with the Thunderbolt uh, connectors. The one disadvantage, one big disadvantage is that this is not out yet, will be released on October 24, but it is available to pre-order if you want uh, to get this one. I think the work we've done here has been very good. Maybe gave you some insights that you wouldn't get elsewhere. Bookmark this one if you want to come back and get some insights about how all these things lay out at the moment. Guys, I'm going to leave it at that and hopefully you found that useful. Hit the like button. If you did, subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in a future video.